Okay, y'all. Yeah, here I'm is in my sun shaded glory. Whew. I'm tired. So look, let's get it. We're gonna do has and the have nots season five, episode five. What is this called? Brilliant lawyers lurking. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay. So the episode starts off. We are at the Artesian. Um, Candace and Jeffrey are waiting on Miss Veronica to show up. So they sitting there at the table, Candace and Jeffrey, they talking, going back and forth. And Jeffrey's like, I'm just going to give in to Veronica. I'm just going to do what she want me to do. I'm going to marry Melissa. I don't have no other choice. Candace is like, nah, Jeffrey, you know, you can't do that. She wants something. She, she got something up her sleeve. She did this. She bring the police to us. And, um, so... Then she, uh, Justin, uh, calls Jeffrey and Justin is talking to Jeffrey as if he's making a call to one of his police friends about, you know, they found the body, they taking the body into the corner and all of that. And Jeffrey sitting there listening. Candace is like, what'd he say? You know, Jeffrey tells Candace they found the body and they both just sitting there. They don't know what the hell to do. They pretty much don't have no choice but to hear Veronica out. So in walks Veronica, clean in her white blazer with her heels on, wig. That wig was, uh, yeah, that wig was on point. So Veronica sashays her ass in with the flowers and she takes the flowers up to the concierge desk and she in her manipulative splendor gets the girl to give up the information on Erica. So uh she Veronica does that and then she moseys her way on over to the table with Candace and Jeffrey. And immediately Veronica goes in on Candace just going on her talking about she wearing knockoffs, calling her stupid, all kind of stuff. So um Let's see. So Veronica wants to know what happened. She like, you know, what's going on? Tell me what's up. And of course, Candace is like not trying to tell her anything because Candace is suspicious of Veronica. But Jeffrey's old go tell it on the mountain ass, of course, just comes out with everything. We stabbed him. And um, say we stabbed him. Over 50 times, Jeffrey say, I stabbed him more than Candace did, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So, Veronica, while she's still taking jabs at Candace, <laughs> she taking jabs at Candace, and she says, um, so it was a crime a passion. It was overkill. She said, usually uh, that's something typical of serial killers, but that's too much of a reach, so we can't go with that. And... Um, she says to Veronica says to Candace, you know, you you a law student, you went to law school, you know, maybe you should have been reading those books instead of using them for knee pads while you were sucking your way to the top. Whew, that Veronica, I swear, because she would be the one to talk and and say some mess like that to Candace, because she did the same thing with Cry a Daddy. <laughs> but we all know who we dealing with. This is Miss Veronica Harrington. She just she ruthless. So, and the whole time they doing this this back and forth sarcastic banter between Candace and and Veronica. Veronica's relentless. Won't let up on Candace. She tell Candace, you know you stupid, but I like you. <laughs> I like you. So they get around to talking about the house and. Um, Veronica's like, where you get the money for the house? And, uh, meanwhile, here come Erica. Erica comes in and gets the flowers. So, boom, Veronica got what she was looking for. She sees now who Erica is. And we're going to get to that later. So, Jeffrey says, um, Jim got the house. And Veronica, and Veronica's like, Veronica, we all know Veronica's smarter than that. Veronica knows better. So, um, 
she she goes on to say uh candace goes on to spill the beans on what happened with the house and says she um she blackmailed him and veronica like well what the hell you have on him uh because i got some shit on jim too but nothing that's gonna make him buy me a house so spill it um so candace goes on to explain that um what she say so okay then once once it comes out about the house veronica's like okay both of y'all give me a dollar give me a dollar give me a dollar because y'all have to hire me as your attorney so give me a dollar and give me the keys to the house and then it comes up about the foreclosure so veronica says you know that foreclosure just saved your ass because the warrant was served after the bank foreclosed on the house so um you know and and candace also told veronica about mr bowman at the bank and veronica's like you stupid because you ain't know that mr bowman is in Catherine and jim's pocket damn girl you stupid and i mean she had she veronica had a point you know because candace that's candace let her arrogance get too far in the way she thinks she got everything sewn up but clearly she doesn't and veronica got that medicine for that ass so um so that's when veronica says um what she say you've been hoodwinked hood rat <laughs> and veronica's just eating it up veronica loving it and candace can't say nothing because everything veronica said is the absolute truth so once it comes out that the foreclosure happened before the warrant was served and before the body was found Candace freely gives up the keys to the house. So, um, so then that was pretty much that whole exchange. Once they got around to the foreclosure and the revelation was made that the body was found, but they can't really be, uh, that can't really be used against them in court because the bank had possession of the house at the time that the body was found. So, Veronica goes head on about her business, but before she walks away from the table, she takes her fingers and runs it in Candace's weave, right? And it's like, oh, my finger. <laughs> so she tried to go at her weave. <laughs> Lord, that much at that Veronica. Mm, mm, mm. So, um, Veronica is brilliant. That bitch is brilliant. That's exactly what Candace said. Veronica is brilliant. Yes, and she is good at what she does. So, then we uh, scoot on over to the crier house where Catherine and Jim are. Jim's cleaning up Catherine's wound, and they start talking about what happened. And Catherine is dead set still on telling Jim that Veronica did this, that Veronica killed Jennifer. And Jim just starts drilling Catherine, just poking all kind of holes in her story, like asking her questions about the gun, how did Veronica get her hands on the gun, talking about ballistics, trajectory, all of that. So, you know, and, and Catherine is emotional at this point. So she's really not thinking logically. All she's thinking about is the fact that Veronica did this mess to her son and you know she that's that's all she focused on she trying to get back and you know get all that anger out about what's what's happened you know she amanda killed herself now and 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 wyatt almost damn near killed himself and she finds out that the person who was supposed to be her friend put a criminal a hardened criminal in the cell with her son and raped him after he's been molested as a child and in her eyes jim let this happen it's jim's fault 
So Veronica's real emotional. She's not thinking about all of this stuff that Jim is bringing up about, you know, the gun and why was Veronica over there? Who knew that Veronica was there? So Jim pretty much took the bottom, knocked the bottom out of her her uh, story that Veronica did that. So she finally comes out and admits that she is the one that shot Jennifer Salison's ass to smithereens. And so then, um, yeah, so Catherine admits and she, Catherine says, and I saved some bullets for your ass too. So, um, you know, and, and, and all of it comes back. Catherine brings it all back up about, you know, she told Jim to have Amanda committed to a mental institution. She told him about Wyatt to, you know, let him go ahead and, and pay for what he had done or whatever. And so it all just comes back out. And again, you know, Veronica is emotional. I mean, not Veronica, Catherine is emotional. So it's all coming back out. So, and, and Catherine also, we heard a name that we haven't heard in a long time, Miss Celine. Catherine is like, oh yeah, I'll cry in front of the cameras just like Miss Celine did. Make it look real good for you. Um, And she says, I'll just use insanity as my defense. Sound like a good defense to me. So that's what I use. And Jim just like, you know, Jim like, this shit ain't going to work. So he going to have to take care of it. So he tells Catherine, I'll take care of it. All right, cool. So, oh, and then Miss Miss Cryer, Miss Miss Catherine, makes sure she mentions to make sure to, that the, the people get the blood out of her $200,000 rug. Okay, huh. so then we are over at Wyatt's place, and Pete shows up. Pete's the pusher man, okay? So why I try and get some blow, right? Pete like, nah, I'm not doing that. I had somebody uh, doing that and messed around, and, and his client died, and he got brought up on murder charges. I'm not giving you no drugs. So... Wyatt, um, again, in typical Wyatt fashion, when he needs something, he all up your ass trying to be your friend. And as soon as Pete was like, nah, nigga, I ain't doing that shit, here go Wyatt talking about, I don't need you and get out. Same thing he did to Jeffrey last week, right? And Pete was like, man, get some help. So anyway, um, Wyatt is desperate and we're going to see that a little bit later on in the episode. So, um. Then we get on over to the Fountain Drop. Fountain Drop where Hannah and Benny and Baby Q are, right? And Lord, I tell you, if I see one more scene with Benny sitting there pouting, damn, Benny! I mean, I know that's your sister and everything and you messed up over what's done happened, but Benny, he's sitting there at the table, lip all poked out, acting like a big ass baby shoves the plate of food away don't want to eat and i'm like dang benny why don't you go get you some butt just a suggestion so mitch calls and mitch gives benny the whole rundown about uh war now being out of jail and he's after candace so here we go Benny to the rescue. Ben, Benny to the rescue. Ben, Benny to the rescue. I don't know what the hell on Benny mind. I, Benny just so damn gullible. Like, I don't know. I get that's, that's Benny's sister. But for him to just hop up out the chair and ready to zoom out the door to go rescue Candace. I mean, all right, Benny. Whatever. So... Now you about to go up against war. Benny ain't built for that. Just like Jeffrey ain't built for this whole 187 situation that he done got himself into. So, then we have Wyatt again. Wyatt rolls up on Quita and them, right? Desperate trying to get some drugs. So, of course, Quita capitalizes on that situation, and she t she tell Wyatt, what she say? I don't want to hear none of that bitchness. 
Ooh, somebody get Quita. Lord, get Quita. And so they end up, they end up hopping in the car with Wyatt. Quita and her two goons end up hopping in the car with Wyatt and making him drive. So they getting, they setting that whole thing up. And then we get back on over to the crier house where the cleanup is underway. They done mopped everything down, got the body, Jennifer out and um david and jim are talking so david is asking jim what's the plan and what they do with jennifer's body david goes on to tell jim that he had to call mama rose mitch's peoples so he done called mama rose and they taking the body over there to mama roses and they're going to burn the body and they gonna pin it on one of Jennifer's recent casualties one of the folks that she put away so they're gonna set him up to take the fall so then um, David is visibly shaken up by this whole situation and David like man we I just keep getting in deeper and deeper like something's got to give basically and Jim tells David that Catherine is the one that did it, right? And, of course, David is like, what? Are you sure? You know, because David is all in. He he totally buying what Catherine is selling about Veronica doing this. Um, So, David, I mean, Jim is like, yeah, Catherine did it, you know, and Jim is telling David, also, you need to talk to Veronica, you know, because I, you know, Jim pretty much is sure everybody else involved is going to be stable, but we all know Veronica is very unstable. So he like, you need to talk to her. And David like, nah, I'm not talking to her. I'm done with her. Like, I know you think I was stupid for staying so loyal to her, but just the way I was loyal to her before, that's just how much I am done with her right now. So, um, Jim like, all right, well, I'll talk to her, right? So, David gets a call as, as David is leaving the crier house. David gets a call from Erica and Erica's like, well, thank you for the flowers. And David is like, I ain't send you no flowers. Um, Eric was like, what? I mean, they right here. What you mean you ain't send me no flowers? And David immediately figures it out. Like, that's Veronica. So David tells Erica to get rid of the flowers. So Erica goes to open the door to get rid of the flowers. And there stand Veronica. Who the thunk? <laughs> right? Typical Veronica. Up to her old, her her antics. So, we gonna see what happens. Um, that damn, that, that Veronica, I swear. Whew, I don't know. We gonna see what happens, y'all. But this was a good episode. It was real good. It's keeping my attention. It's really holding my attention. I'm interested now to see future episodes, to see what happens with war and, um, also how this circles back around with Mama Rose since that's Mitch's people. So all right, we're gonna we're gonna hang in there. We're gonna keep watching. We're gonna keep doing these reviews. And I want y'all to also get down there in the comments. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Make sure y'all keep coming back. I want y'all to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can kick it with me. All right, y'all. Good night.